within chapter five, we will continue with applying Newton's laws. What we have, we will learn how to use Newton's first law to solve problems involving the forces that act on a body in equilibrium. And we will see how to use Newton's second law to solve problems involving the forces that act on an accelerating body. So you know that if the system is in equilibrium, net force acting on the system is zero, then there is no acceleration. And here, if there is an acceleration, it means that the net force acting on the system is different from zero, then you have to use Newton's second law. And we will learn the nature of different types of friction forces. We will enter this part of chapter five on Thursday, this is in the next lecture. And we will also learn how to solve problems that involve these friction forces. And finally, within this chapter, we will learn how to solve problems involving the forces that act on a body moving along a circular path. I will also give you some information about the key properties of the four fundamental forces of nature. So let me start with the first one, using Newton's first law when forces are in equilibrium. A body is in equilibrium when it is at rest or moving with constant velocity. We have already discussed this one in the previous lectures, but we are talking about this type of movement or rest in an inertial frame of reference. The essential principle is Newton's first law for this condition if the body is in equilibrium. If the body is in equilibrium, then the net force acting on the system is zero, okay? So in addition to that, the net force along the X axis must be zero and the net force along the Y axis must be zero, okay? Don't forget this one. So the components of this force must also be zero if the system is in equilibrium. So now I have many questions related to this one. I think three or four examples, and then I will continue with the second one. The first question, one dimensional equilibrium, tension in a massless rope. You see massless rope. A gymnast with mass M 50 kilogram suspends herself from the lower end of a hanging rope of negligible mass. The upper end of the rope is attached to the gymnasium sailing. What is the gymnast's weight? What force, magnitude and direction does the rope exert on her? What is the tension at the top of the rope? So this is the gymnast and this is the rope. This is the sailing, okay? So you have to draw three body diagrams for the gymnast and for the rope. We have two objects here, gymnast and rope, okay? So, what is the gymnast weight? What force does the rope exert on gymnasts? What is the tension at the top of the rope? So, let's draw the three body diagrams. First of all, for the gymnast, this in B. What forces act on this gymnast. Weight of gymnast due to the gravity along this direction and the tension force applied by rope on gymnast. So this gymnast applies a force on the rope and due to the Newton's third law, this rope applies a back force in opposite direction to the gymnast so this force is given here, tension force, okay? And what about the free body diagram for the rope? There is a tension force due to the gymnast on the rope, and there is a tension force due to the sailing on the rope, okay? Here we have sailing, rope applies a force on the sailing, and then sailing applies a force on the rope. Okay, is it clear? 
If you don't understand free body diagrams, it is not necessary to continue. Any question here? Then if you show the forces acting on different objects, then you can easily answer your questions. So what do you see here? The gymnast is in equilibrium, right? Where is it? Suspends herself. Then what about the first question? What is the weight of gymnast? Weight of gymnast is given by M gymnast times G 50 kilogram and put G here and then weight is given 490 Newton. OK, this is force. What force does the rope exert on her? The rope exert on gymnast. This tension force is asked. So if you calculate the net force acting on the gymnast, along the y-axis you can find it so net force along the y-axis on gymnast is tension force if you choose the positive y in this direction this is positive plus negative weight because this is negative y direction and then what about the acceleration acceleration is zero because the system is in equilibrium then net force along the y is zero then you can calculate the tension force applied by rope on the gymnast, 490 Newton. What about the last question? What is the tension at the top of the rope? Tension at the top of the rope. So free body diagram for the rope is given in the C, figure C here. So this system is also at rest, okay, in equilibrium. Then net force acting on the rope along the y-axis the force applied by sailing on the rope minus the force applied by gymnast on the rope is equal to zero. Then you can calculate the force applied by sailing on the rope, which is given by 490 Newton. So this force is equal to this force since the rope is massless, okay? And here, within this question, we will have a rope with mass, then situation will change. Do we have any question here? Then one dimensional equilibrium, tension in a rope with mass, find the tension at each end of the rope. In example 5.1, if the weight of the rope is 120 Newton, so now, we have a rope with mass. What is the free body diagram for the gymnast? And what is the free body diagram for the rope? And what is the free body diagram for gymnast and rope as a body? So let's start with the gymnast, figure A here. We have tension force applied by rope on the gymnast in upper direction, in positive Y direction. And this is the weight of the gymnast, okay? We are talking about this situation. And what about the free body diagram for the rope? There is a tension force applied by the sailing on the rope. Tension force applied by sailing on the rope. And there is a tension force applied by gymnast on the rope. And there is a weight of rope now, okay? Here, in this case, we have these two tension forces and the rope was massless, but now we have a weight of rope, so you have to shove this one here, okay? This is the new free body diagram for the rope, if a rope has mass. And free body diagram for gymnast and rope, so if you consider rope and gymnast a single object, then force applied by sailing on rope, and weight of the rope and weight of the gymnast you can consider like this you can only write this a complete system for two objects rope and gymnast if they have same acceleration okay it is better to use this two free body diagrams okay separately so now let's write this one net force along the y-axis acting on the gymnast rope 
rotation force applied by rope on the gymnast minus weight in negative y direction. Since the gymnast in equilibrium acceleration is zero, then put here zero. Then again, we have 490 Newton, same one, okay? So what about the rope? Rope is also in equilibrium. Then this minus this one minus this one is equal to zero. So net force along the y-axis is zero. Then you can calculate tension force applied by sailing on the rope is given with 610 Newton, which is as this in the question. Continue with example 5.5. Equilibrium of bodies connected by cable and poly. OK, let me read the question. Your firm needs to hold granite blocks up a 15 degrees slope out of a quarry and to lower dirt into the quarry to fill the holes. You design a system in which a granite block on a cart with steel wheels weight of this one including balls, block and cart, is pulled uphill on steel rails by a dirt filled bucket. This is the weight of bucket, including dirt, that descends vertically into the quarry. How must the weights V1 and V2 be related in order for the system to move with constant speed? Speed is constant, if the speed is constant, it means that acceleration is zero, right? Then the system is in equilibrium. You can apply Newton's first law, right? Ignore friction in the poly and wheels and ignore the weight of the cable. So this cable is massless, okay? There is no friction in the poly and there is no friction between the wheels and this steel rails. So now let's try to draw idealized model of the system. We have a cart here and this has certain weight V1 and here we have a bucket. It has certain V2, okay? So now let's draw free body diagram separately. This is the free body diagram in C free body diagram for the bucket. And here in D, we have free body diagram for the cart. Okay. So what we have in the free body diagram for the bucket in C, there is a tension in the cable and there is a weight of the bucket. Okay. These are the forces. And we have a constant speed. So the bucket is moving like this. And what about the free diagram for the cart? We have tension force due to the cable here, tension force. And we have normal force applied by this surface to the cart. Normal force applied by the surface of the rail, right? So look at the normal force. Normal force is always perpendicular to the surface. For this reason, we draw it like this, and this is the tension force. In addition to that, there is a weight of this cart. This is the weight. What do you see here? This is the Y component of the weight. Here we have 15 degrees, put 15 degrees here. Y component of the weight and X component of the weight. Okay. Now, Let's try to solve the question. How must the weights V1 and V2, weight of bucket and weight of cart, be related in order for the system to move with constant speed? If the speed is constant, then the acceleration is zero. Then Newton's first law applies here. And then net force, just for the bucket case, net force applying on the bucket is zero, then tension and negative y, this one, weight here, they are equal to each other, then tension force is equal to V2, and then apply Newton's first law 
here on the card. So net force acting on the card is zero. Then just write the forces, tension force in positive x direction. And then weight times sinus 15 degrees along the negative x direction. So they are equal to each other. Then tension force is given with this expression. So what we have here, we have V1, here we have V2. So since tension force here and also here are equal to each other, then you can get relation between V2 and V1. So you can get this result if this cable is massless. Okay, don't forget this one. Any question here? Now let me continue with the Newton's second law, dynamics of particles. In dynamics problems, we apply Newton's second law to bodies on which the net force is not zero. Then there is an acceleration, okay? If there is an acceleration, it means that net force is different from zero. Then you have to apply Newton's second law. So now let me remind you a very important point when you are dealing with the free body diagrams, correct and incorrect free body diagrams for a falling body. Here, there is an apple. Only the force of gravity acts on this falling fruit, okay? Only gravity acts on this falling fruit. So what do you see here? Correct free body diagram. Let's consider this is x axis, this is y axis, and this is the weight due to the gravity, okay? And this is the acceleration, a y. AY is equal to G for this case, okay? And this AY or M times AY is not a force. So weight touches to the object here, weight vector, but acceleration vector does not touch on the object, okay? If you write like this, if you draw like this, this is the weight and this is the MA. This vector does not belong in a free body diagram because MA is not a force. Acceleration occurs due to a force. MA is not a force, okay? I have explained during the last lecture. I will not go into detail here. You can also read this caution in the book. MA doesn't belong in free body diagrams. Remember that the quantity MA is the result of the forces acting on a body, not a force itself. Due to the forces, A is produced, okay? Let me continue with the examples. Example 5.6 from the book, straight line motion with a constant force. Here you see an ice boat, okay? And one man is sitting within the ice boat. An ice boat is at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface. Let's consider that this is the surface of the lake, but it is frozen, okay? An ice boat is at rest on a frictionless horizontal surface due to the blowing wind. Four seconds after the ice boat is released, it is moving to the right at six meters per second. So there is a blowing wind from left to the right, okay? And what constant horizontal force does the wind exert on the ice boat? What is the force applied on the ice boat due to the wind? And the combined mass of ice boat and rider is 200 kilogram. The combined mass of rider and boat. So what about the free body diagram? First of all, just draw the free body diagram and show the forces acting on this system. So there is a weight, okay, which is given by M times G. Here M is mass of the ice boat plus mass of the rider because they are traveling together with the same acceleration. And there is a normal force due to the surface. And what else? There is a force along the positive x direction due to the wind, okay? There is no other force acting on this system. And then the ice boat is moving along the positive x direction and we have acceleration. 
why we have acceleration? Because at the beginning it was at rest, okay? And then after four seconds, it is moving with some certain velocity, so it is accelerated, okay? We have acceleration in this direction. So now let's write the net force acting on this system along the y-axis, n minus mg. If you choose plus y, in upward direction and minus y in downward direction, n minus mg is equal to zero, n is equal to mg. And what about the net force acting on the system along the x-axis? We have force due to the wind, which is equal to m times ax, right? So in the question, this force due to the wind is asked. So I have to calculate this force due to the wind. In order to calculate the force due to the wind, I need to know this AX acceleration. So how to calculate acceleration? Then the third equation in chapter two for constant acceleration can help us. Vx is equal to V0x plus AXT for constant acceleration. What I have told you during the second chapter in chapter two, we have learned some equations, four equations for constant acceleration. And I have told you that these four equations will be very useful for each forthcoming chapter if the acceleration is constant, okay? So here we are talking about chapter five and we are still using the equations from chapter two for constant acceleration. So. What is the Vx final velocity of the ice boat, which is given six meter per second? What is the initial velocity? It is at rest, it is zero. What is the acceleration? What is the time? Time is four second. Acceleration is unknown. And from this equation, I can calculate the acceleration 1.5 meter per square second. And just take this acceleration, put it there in this equation then you can calculate force due to the wind, 300 kilogram times meter per square second or 300 Newton. Any question? Okay, now let me show you another example, example 5.7, straight line motion with friction. Suppose a constant horizontal friction force with magnitude 100 Newton opposes the motion of the ice boat in example 5.6. Here, we have considered that this surface is frictionless. But now, we have another type of question. We have a friction force opposite to the movement of this ice boat. Then, in this case, what constant force must the wind exert on the ice boat to cause the same constant X acceleration, 1.5 meter per square second. Okay, let's draw the free body diagram. Weight of the ice boat and normal force applied by the surface. And then this is the wind force along the positive X direction. And this is the friction force along the negative X direction opposite to the moment. And this is the acceleration. So along the Y axis, we have net force is zero, okay? There is no movement along the y-axis. And what about the forces, net force along the x-axis? We have wind force in positive x-direction and we have friction force in negative x-direction. Then they are equal to m times ax. So ax is given within the question 1.5 meter per square second. m is given in the question what was where is M? This one, 200 kilogram. Put them here. Friction force is given. Then you can calculate wind force, 400 Newton. So what do you see here? That 400 Newton here, wind force, is bigger than the wind force here. We have found 300 Newton. So in order to have same acceleration, wind force here, in the case of surface with friction must be increased. Any question?
Let me continue with another example, tension in an elevator cable. An elevator and its load have a combined mass of 800 kilograms. The elevator is initially moving downward at 10 meter per second. It slows to a stop with constant acceleration in a distance of 25 meter. What is the tension T in the supporting cable here while the elevator is being brought to rest? Okay, let's try to draw the free body diagram. There is a weight of the elevator, which is given M times G. M is given within the question 800 kilogram. And this is the tension force, right? Upward direction. And what about the acceleration? The elevator slows to a stop with constant acceleration. What about the moment elevator is initially moving downward? Elevator is moving downward and it is slowing down. What about the direction of acceleration? If an object is slowing down, then acceleration must be opposite to its movement, right? So elevator is moving in this direction, downward, okay, with decreasing speed. And since it is slowing down, we have an opposite acceleration in upward direction. Is it clear? Okay, then let's apply the Newton's second law. Net force along the y-axis, just choose the positive y here, positive tension here, minus weight, which is equal to m times a y, this one. And within the question, tension in the supporting cable is s. So tension in the supporting cable from this equation can be written weight plus m times a y. Okay, so you know of the M, which is given, you know of the G, you know of the M here. What about the A? A is missing. What is the acceleration? How to find the acceleration? Again, chapter two will help you. Look at this one, this equation, timeless equation. Vy square is equal to V0y square plus 2ay times y minus y0. Y minus Y zero is given, 25 meter. And then A Y is unknown. V zero Y is given 10 meter per second. V Y is given, it is zero. Why? Because it slows to a stop, okay? Initially, it has velocity 10 meter per second, and then finally it is at rest. For this reason, final velocity is zero. So put all this information into this equation for the constant acceleration. Then a y can be calculated plus two meter per square second. What is the meaning of plus sign for the acceleration? It is along the positive y direction. Okay, then take this acceleration use it here in this equation, then you can calculate tension in the cable of the elevator. Is it clear? Any question here? Then let me continue. What about the apparent weight in an accelerating elevator? A 50 kilogram woman stands on a bathroom scale while riding in the elevator in example 5.8 here. What is the reading on the scale? So this is the free body diagram for woman. This is the weight and this is the normal force and this is the acceleration. Acceleration is in positive y direction. We have already discussed this in the previous example. And so just try to write the Newton's second law for the free body diagram we have drawn here for the woman. So net force along the y direction, normal force applied by the surface of the elevator on the woman minus mg of woman is equal to m times a y. m is the mass of the woman, a y is the acceleration of the woman. 
since the woman is moving together with the elevator, elevator and woman have same acceleration. So I can use this acceleration also for the woman since they are moving together. Don't forget this one. If they are not moving together, you cannot use the same acceleration. So just put the 50 kilogram instead of mass here and instead of G put this one and instead of acceleration, we have already calculated plus two meter per second within the previous example, put it there. So finally, we have 519 Newton. Okay, normally, what is the weight of the woman? Normally, the weight of the woman is 490 Newton. Okay, but if woman is staying on a bathroom scale and if she is moving with the elevator like this, then it has this weight. This is apparent weight. Any question here? So this transparency is also related to this example, apparent weight and apparent weightlessness. So normally this guy has certain weight in Earth, but here in space, he experiences apparent weightlessness. The extreme case occurs when the elevator has a downward acceleration, AY. Here we have upward acceleration, okay? If the direction of the AY is downward, then, and if the magnitude of this AY is minus G, put minus G here instead of AY, G minus G, this will be zero, then apparent weight of the passenger will be zero, okay? Then passenger seems to be weightless. Example 5.10 from the book, acceleration down a hill at the Bogen loaded with students, total weight V. There are many students on this toboggan. Slides down a snow covered hill that slopes at a constant angle alpha. So this is the slope of the way, let's say, and they slides down a snow covered hill and the toboggan is well waxed. So there is virtually no friction. What is its acceleration? So we consider that there is no friction between the toboggan and the surface here and acceleration is asked. So what is the free body diagram? First of all, just draw the free body diagram. There is a weight in this direction, okay? Let me draw. And there is a normal force, be careful, perpendicular to the surface, always normal force, perpendicular to the surface, okay? What about other forces? There is no other force acting on this system and they are moving in this direction, okay? So this is the free body diagram here. And let me ask you a question. What is the movement of this toboggan along the y-axis? Along the y-axis, the net force acting on the toboggan is zero because there is a normal force here and there is a component of y component of the weight and they are equal to each other. And we have only force along the positive x direction which is the X component of the weight, W times sinus alpha. The net force acting along the Y axis, N minus W cosine alpha, and it is zero because there is no movement along the Y axis. So we have an acceleration along the positive X direction, and we have net force along the positive X direction, then you can write this relation. So here there is a correct free body diagram and incorrect free body diagram. What do you see here? We have weight and we have normal force perpendicular to the surface. If you show the normal force like this, it is wrong and you will get the wrong result. Don't forget. And MA is not a force. Don't forget. Now let me continue with the example 5.11. Two bodies with the same acceleration. You push a one kilogram food tray through the cafeteria line 
there's a constant 9 Newton force. The tray pushes a 0.5 kilogram milk carton. The tray and carton slide on a horizontal surface so greasy that friction can be ignored. Find the acceleration of the tray and carton and the horizontal force that the tray exerts on the carton. So now let's try to draw the free body diagram for milk carton. First of all, this is the milk carton. It has certain weight and there is a normal force. This surface applies on this milk carton and there is a force applied by the tray on the carton in this direction, let's say. OK, and what about the free body diagram for foot tray? This is the weight of the tray. This is the normal force applied by the surface on this tray. And this is the force applied by hand on this tray. And this is the force applied by the carton on the tray. The force applied by milk carton on the tray, OK? So you push the tray and then tray applies a force in this direction on carton. Then this carton applies a back force on the tray due to the Newton's third law, okay? So here we have it. Or you can consider that this carton and tray as a body, since they are moving together, this is the normal force applied by surface both on tray and milk carton. And this is the weight of the milk carton and tray together. And this is the total force. This is the force applied by hand. OK, and this is the acceleration along the X axis. OK, this is easiest way sometimes and very useful, but I always suggest you to separately draw free body diagrams like this, okay? Write the Newton's second law for the tray, Fx. What are the forces acting on the tray along the x-axis? Force applied by hand and force applied by milk carton on the tray. So then F applied by hand minus F applied by milk carton on tray. So it is equal to M tray times AX. So what about the net force acting on the milk carton along the X axis? This one F applied by tray on milk carton. And here we have acceleration. Where is it? F applied by tray on milk carton, which is equal to M milk carton times A acceleration. So here on the left side we have this one on the right side we have this one here on the left side we have this one on the right side we have this one so instead of this one here you can use just this one so finally you can get the force which is equal to mt plus mc times ax what is this force this force is given 9 newton then from this equation, you can find the acceleration A. And if you know the acceleration A, then you can find the force applied by tray on milk carton. Then you have found the answers of two questions. Any question? Again here, I have already told you, but I would like to repeat this information. Treating two bodies as a single body, like we have done it here, works only if the two bodies have the same magnitude and direction of acceleration. Any question here? Let me finish with this example. This is the last example. Two bodies with the same magnitude of acceleration. Figure shows an air track glider with mass M1 moving on a level frictionless air track in the physics lab. The glider is connected to a lap weight with mass M2 by a light, flexible, non-stretching string that passes over a stationary, frictionless poly. Find the acceleration of each body and the tension in the string. What is the acceleration of this glider? What is the acceleration of this mass? And what is the tension in the string? 
So three questions. So just draw the free body diagram for glider. So there is M1G weight of the glider in this negative Y direction, and there is normal force in positive Y direction, and there is the tension force along the positive X direction, and this glider moves in positive X direction. Then we have here a 1X, okay? What about the free diagram for the weight here? There is a tension force in upward direction, and there is a weight in downward direction. And what about the acceleration of this one? Acceleration is along the negative y direction, okay? Or downward, okay? You can choose this one is positive. It depends on you. So now let's write the Newton's second law of glider. What is the total net force acting on the glider along the x? Along the X, only tension force acts on the glider, which is equal to M1 times A1 X. I can write this one M1 times A. What is A? I will talk about this. And what about the net force acting on the glider along the Y axis? Net force acting on the glider along the y-axis, n minus mg, right? n minus mg. And there is no movement along the y-axis, so it is equal to net force acting along the y-axis is zero. And what about the lab weight? The net force acting on the glider. Here we have very important situation, very nice example for choosing coordinate axis. So when you are investigating this guy, you can choose positive y direction, this one. And when you are dealing with this one, you can choose positive y direction, this one. Okay? Or you can choose positive y direction, this one. But the initial choice of the coordinate axis is very important. We have discussed this one for many times. Just choose the positive y direction, this one, because the body is moving like this, okay? So then A2y is along this one. And what about the forces along the y-axis? M2g minus t. M2g minus t. Then the net force along the y-axis is not zero because it is moving then it is equal to M2 times AY2. AY2 is this one. And instead of A1X here, and instead of AY2 here, I just take A and A because they are moving together, okay? The same acceleration. So now we have three important equations. So tension force is equal to M1 times A, and instead of tension, you can write this expression here instead of this one, and you can calculate the A acceleration of the body, and you can also calculate tension by using these three expressions here. Any question here? So the most important thing is that you have to draw correct free body diagram for each object under investigation. Whenever you draw correct free body diagram and you show the forces acting on the object, then you can get the correct result. Any question here? If you don't have any question, then I will close this session. On Thursday, we will continue with friction forces and I will try to finish chapter five. Take care of yourself.